Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic, and I'm the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode, we went ahead and introduced Epoxy here. As you can see on the screen, this doesn't necessarily look like a page that would require a recycler view implementation, but we've gone ahead and done it anyway to showcase the power of Epoxy. If you missed it, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I'll link a card in the top right now. And in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and continue our discussion on networking and instead actually dive into paging. As the thumbnail suggests, this is a very popular topic in networking in general and has been requested by a few people within the community, so I'm very happy to start this discussion here. Taking a look at our API call here for a particular character, an individual character, we can see this JSON payload. We've discussed this a little bit at length before, but what I want to draw your attention to is that this payload looks exactly like the payload that will exist inside of this get all characters endpoint, which as we can see here in the response, has some additional information about paging. So something like this would be the response we would get back from the first page when we request. And we could see here inside of our little metadata info that there is a key here for next, and it points us to another page where we can continue to get the rest of the results. We see here top level information about how many pages there actually are, and then how many characters that there are in general. So taking a look at this little results array, we can see that this JSON looks very similar to getting a single character by its ID. So we're essentially going to be fetching a list of characters and we're going to be doing so in a paging format. So let's talk really quickly about pagination and what pagination actually is. You could think of it like an infinite scroll. For instance, on Instagram, you can continue scrolling down your feed and you essentially never run out of posts. Clearly, if you were to try to fetch all of the posts at once, you would run into not only massive network calls, but also just consuming too much data, long query times, and at the end of the day, it just really wouldn't be feasible. So what happens is you end up fetching, let's say, 20 posts, and then as you scroll down and near the end of the list, the app will go ahead and fetch another 20 posts and basically append that information to the bottom of the list. So appearing to you as the user that you just never run out of posts and you can continue to scroll. The reason I've gone ahead and Googled something is because there's another form of pagination here that I want to discuss so that we can think about this a little bit more technically. So at the bottom of every Google search, there are different pages that you can click on. This is exactly what pagination is, except this is user-based pagination, right? Deliberate pagination. What I want to call your attention to here is that there are there is no information here other than the search parameter inside of this URL and a whole bunch of other stuff. But the second we click on number two here, somewhere in our URL up here, we have a certain query parameter called start equals 10. And that means that we are basically asking the API for information, but we are starting at a particular offset. And that's how we end up finding a particular page. So the first page, if there are 10 posts that we get back, will be posts zero through 10. And then the next page will be posts 11 through 20, et cetera. So you can provide the API some information of where it should start its processing by query parameters. And obviously, if we go ahead and just select another page here, our start parameter has been updated to move us to the appropriate location within the overall response. Flipping back to the documentation here, there's a few more things I want to call out. The fact that the previous key here on this particular page is null. This means that this is the first page in the list. And then once we reach the last page from the API, the next key will go ahead and have null in it. And so we will need to take these nulls into account when we want to find out which edge of the response we are on. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure you know about pagination possibly without even realizing it, but in case you needed a little bit of a different way to think about it, I hope that helped. So with all that said, let's go ahead and dive into the code here a bit to actually see how we can go ahead and implement this. So I've simply gone ahead and created a characters package here, and we've created something called a characters data source. This is going to be the brains behind all of our execution, and this couples very nicely with our recycler view, or specifically in our case, our epoxy implementation, to basically tie together the user's interaction when they reach near the bottom of the list or near a particular location in the list, that this data source will be invoked to load additional pages and propagate the information 
accordingly. So in the constructor here, we're going to add a dependency to the shared view model to allow for network requests and make use of the correct view model scope because we are using coroutines just to keep everything in sync with our life cycle. And so at the moment, this class is nothing special, but we're going to go ahead and change that very quickly. First thing we need to do is add our paging library to the dependencies of our project. So I've gone ahead and done so here. Flipping back to the data source, we will actually inherit from the page keyed data source here, which goes ahead and takes two different types here, basically a key and a value. And so we're going to go ahead and have int to denote the different page index. And then what we are looking for here, the get character by ID response. So we now have an error in our IDE, and that is because we need to override or implement these three different functions here. And now taking a look at these functions, we have the load initial, the load after, and the load before gone ahead and move this function down because we are not going to be worrying about it in our implementation. But these two functions here are going to be the bread and butter of how we accomplish paging. So as it may seem, the load initial function will be invoked on the very first page that needs to get loaded. And then every call after that, the load after function will get invoked with some particular parameters that we can use to find out our current page index. So in order to propagate information back out of this data source, we need to invoke the callback.onResult function. And there are two functions that we can utilize here. We're going to make use of the secondary function here, where we need to provide it some data, a list of character by ID responses, whatever we've denoted here in this constructor. And then we have a previous page key and next page key fields, both nullable integers. And this is exactly how the library works with finding those nulls, finding out which edge or end of the page list we are a part of or we are approaching. So we'll use that to our advantage. But the most important thing is that we need to somehow get the list of characters and propagate that up as our data. The more I think about our data source constructor here, instead of passing in a particular view model, we're going to go ahead and pass in a coroutine scope and the corresponding repository just so that we have a little bit more flexibility here. So the character repository is a brand new class. We've done absolutely nothing, but we do need to come up with a function to interact with this endpoint and surface the list of characters. So we could simply create a suspend function in here, get character lists, we require a page index, and we're gonna return the list of character by ID response. We're gonna return an empty list here just to get rid of all the red squiggles, but we can bounce back to our data source and continue on with the implementation. So we can make use of our coroutine scope, calling launch on it, and we could fetch our character list by invoking the repository dot get character list passing in the page index of one. Now it's safe to hard code one here because we are inside the load initial function, which should only be called upon fetching the first page. And then for simplicity's sake here, we can use callback dot on result passing in our character list. And then our two other parameters here are the previous page key. We know this is null because this should be the first page and then the next page key. We're going to go ahead and hard code two at this moment because we do know that the next page will be two. However, we'll come back in a little bit and clean this up because it is possible that this will go ahead and fail and we want to handle that accordingly. Then we can go ahead and basically copy and paste the same implementation inside of our load after, except instead of hard coding one, we can make use of the parameters passed into us. So we can go ahead and call params.key and this should be the index of the page that we are loading. So after load initial gets called once, once the user scrolls a little bit, the data source will be invoked for load after, passing in the parameters having two as its key. And basically this interaction here is exactly how we accomplish the infinite scroll. We do also need to update this here because obviously we don't want to hard code two in case here. So we're gonna go ahead and say params.key plus one. However, I also don't like this, but we will clean this up in a little bit. And as I mentioned before, the load before function, we are not going to go ahead and worry about at this moment in time. So there you have it. The load initial and the load after functions here are actually complete. This will function as a data source that we need it to, but there are a few other things that we need to get up and running before we can call this entire segment complete. So if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like in the video. I do not want to cram all of this into one video, so we will pick this up in the next episode where we will go ahead and continue our implementation of paging, get this data source up and running, and even build out our UI layer where we can go ahead and display a scrolling list of these characters. Please subscribe if you are brand new so that you don't miss out on what's to come, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.